hello, hello. Welcome to the Lady Gang Quickie. I am here with Kelty and a special guest, <laughs> Prince Derek. For those of you who've been listening to the podcast for a while and are familiar, Kelty has cycled through several assistants. Several. <laughs> We've loved all of them. Yes, in their all own special their, ways. In their own special way. But we have the newest, brightest star mm-hmm. coming to you, to your earballs right now. Mm-hmm. Kelty, give us a little intro of the man who's been keeping your life together for the past, how long has this been? We're at, I think, just past three months, right? No way. It's longer. No. Okay. Well, Derek is- Five um, months. Five? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So (laughs) here's the thing. For a long time, I didn't have an assistant and I thought I could handle my own life. And the truth is then I just ended up resenting my husband all the time because he has his own career and life. And I'm like, why aren't you helping me and being my full-time, you know, Manny? Um, But he's like, I'm living my own life. So- Um, it was really interesting. The story's really interesting. Um, so basically Derek was a competitor on my show, super fan. And so, um, we'll talk about that first. So Derek, you, when did you sign up for super fan? That, that first started February of 2022. Okay. And you saw Shania post it. Yes. And what happened? Well, I first didn't think it was real. I thought it was a scam. Okay. Lots of people thought it was a scam. Yeah. But then when I saw her post, I realized it was legit. Yeah. And it was a, th- that was the longest three months of my life, that casting process. It was? Yeah. Because I was like on edge the whole time. Like, is it going to happen? Am I going to get chosen? Am I going to meet Shania? Like, is this going to... Because you, for those of you who didn't watch the show or you're new to the podcast, Superfan was essentially the biggest fans of these huge artists would all compete to be, to prove who the biggest Superfan was. And Derek is a longtime lover of Shania. Yeah. Like number one Superfan. So you, you applied and then you made it on the show and we met at the taping of the show because I was executive producer. So I wasn't allowed to know anyone, but I knew them very well because in our offices for Superfan, we had an entire wall that literally had eight by tens of every single person we were considering. And for each star on the show, there was probably 40 people in consideration as their super fans, because, you know, you would make sure that they didn't have a felony record and then like 10 of them would leave. And then you had to make sure that they (laughs) never had like a bad stalker. And then, and then they had to pass a psych test and Mm -hmm. then they had to like, I mean, there were just so many rules as far as like putting normies in on stage with like superstars. Like we were, had to be so careful. So Derek just kept making a pass. He kept making a pass and they would do these zooms with you, I think. And then we would watch the zooms back, but I wasn't allowed to have any contact with them. So even the day of shooting, um, like I saw, I said, hi, and I met you guys, but like, I wasn't because we, because we weren't airing for a while, we didn't want it to look like, oh, if this person's friends with Kelty, then they won. Right. Like it could not look fake at all. But what was crazy is that the show got pushed for so many months and all of the fans thought that they were talking to Chelsea on my assistant email because I would send out updates about the show from my assistant email to all the list of people being like, hey guys, Kelty's not allowed to talk to you, but she wants you to know that you have an air date, blah, 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 yeah. blah. But it was me the whole time because I didn't have an assistant at the time. Of course. So, which is so funny because this whole time you thought you were talking to Chelsea, but you were actually talking to me. So long story short, I want to get into more Derek, but long story short, I'm looking for an assistant and I put up an online, um, thing like online indeed being like, okay, here's everything I want. And I was like, you need to, it's high and low. You're going to be doing this great stuff. And then this terrible stuff. And like, anyway, I got all of these people really wanted this job which is amazing. And I interviewed like 15 people and I was being very thorough because I was like, you know what? If I invite someone into my life this time, I want it to be like, I want them to last. I want it to be perfect. I want it to be the right match. Like I'm just at a point in my life where no bullshit. And so I went out to dinner with Jody Roth, who was my partner on a super fan. And I was like, she's like, what'd you do today? And I was like, I, oh God, I auditioned. I call it an audition. I auditioned, (laughs) you know, assistants all day. It was like so crazy. And, um, and she was like, oh, you know, who's in town who just moved here, Derek from super fan. I was like that smiley, joyful Shania loving piece of boa wearing sunshine. She was like, yeah, he's looking for a job. You should reach out to him. And I was like, oh, and so at first I was like, no, no, no. And then I was like, wait, he already passed 
all the psych tests. Yeah. I know is not a nut ball. 900 questions. It was 900 questions? What kind of questions are on a psych evaluation? I don't even remember. I want, I'm so curious. I like blocked it out as soon as it was over. Wow. But, but like. It was kind of like how, it was like background information. Yeah. How would you deal with negative feedback from the show, positive feedback, um, fame or not, no fame, like all kinds of various. I'm so confused about those things. Cause I'm like, couldn't somebody fake the right answer? If answers? you were a real psycho, you'd if be you like me psycho. and you'd fake it. Right. Yeah. Right. Or maybe it's not, maybe questions. you don't know. Maybe a true psychopath doesn't know the right answer. They also make you do it all <laughs> over FaceTime. Like a proctor is oh. watching you do it. <gasps> What? Yeah. Like the SATs. That's yeah. why the show was so expensive. Just yeah, letting no everyone kidding. know. Yeah. It cost us so much money to like psych test all these people. It was That's crazy. Wild. Oh my God. Anyway, so I was like, okay. So I reached out to Derek and I was like, hey, you know, let's like have a, you know, have a Zoom or whatever. And then I don't really remember except now he's well, here and in my life. Also, we got a text, me and Jack, the day before I flew in for one of our days of recording, you said I'm auditioning yes. an assistant. Uh-huh. So I want you guys honest feedback, like, yeah. you know, in the uh, on the day, let me know, whatever. So obviously you've passed with flying colors. You passed, Derek. But Derek, do you remember our conversation? So we finished shooting that day and I get in the car because Derek's going to drive me to the airport or something. And do you remember our conversation in the car Yeah. about Kelty? Yeah. I Should remember. we tell her? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, hold on. And also you're bringing professional Derek right now. I need you to bring full Prince Derek. Well, first of all, Kelty texted me on the day that I accepted a job at Whole Foods. No. And I was so depressed. I had applied to 30 jobs. I accepted a job at Whole Foods. I did not want it. I was crying all day. I was so sad, but I needed a job. Oh my gosh. I had been here for six weeks in LA. I needed a job. I didn't know what I was doing. And then she texted me five hours later and changed my life. Oh. So <clears throat> my first day here at her house was a full-on Lady Gang production. Yes. Mm -hmm. I met you and Jack, mm -hmm. and which was crazy because I had been listening to Lady Gang for the last two years since Superfan. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know that. So, yeah. So, you know, big day for me. <laughs> and then I found out I was going to bring Becca Tobin to the airport. After the day in my 2017 Ford Focus, which was impeccable. <laughs> I know it's, it's the cleanest car I've Diane ever Keaton. been in. Normally it's this woman that's driving me in her rolling trash can of a car and it, it was delightful. So don't even, don't yeah. even try. I just thought it was so funny. <clears throat> Because J Derek has not been in access to fame. So I'm like, right. we're sitting here and we're like, it's just Becca. And he's like, no, it's Becca Tobin from like <laughs> actress. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he still gets gooped about it, which I love it, but he does it on the low key. So you yeah. don't know he's gooped. Yeah. yeah. Like the other day, Melissa Etheridge was at oh. E! News and he was like, Ugh! I would have been but I was like, on. keep cool. But he keeps it you so keep cool. You keep it so cool. Because even when Kathy Griffin was here, you're such oh. a fan who isn't. But like, you kept it so cool. Yeah. You, he, that is a what's, gift. And then we kiki behind the scenes and we're like, Ugh, well, Yes. Like, yeah. and, which just makes it fun. Yeah. yeah. So you took back a Tobin and to what did airport. you guys, you talk shit about me. You yeah. said, am I a psycho? No, no. We, we, we had a great chat the whole way there. Uh -huh. You were really lovely to me oh, and you me offered too. me some great advice and about Kelty. And what was the advice? The advice was, um, you're a robot okay. and, um, you are, you know, you're a worker and then you turn it off at power the end down. of the day. You power down. And that was great insight. And Do you think that's true? It's it was it was more true before the surgery. Oh, yeah, <gasps> it's yes. Wow. Since the surgery, you're less you're you're not like that really. Hmm. You're you're way more like even. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Before I love the surgery, hearing this because I don't see her off. Like yeah. I, or I I only see you working. Yeah. Yeah. So like she doesn't power down the way she used to. No, there's wow. been a huge. So shift that wasn't since a character flaw. It was actually health related. It was like exhaustion. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, I, you know what? It's interesting because I had to like conserve, right? So I'd be like, and then I'd have to be Kelty and I'd like turn it well, off. Because yeah. I, I said to him, I was like, I remember not knowing Kelty. It, you know, we knew each other very casually. Right, sure. Never spending a lot of time together. And I remember the days at CBS where I would take it personally 
when we would like have this fun thing, we'd all be recording, we'd all be doing our thing. And then we would finish say goodbye to the guest. And either I'd be like, Kelty, just because that we're stopping recording, you still need to be nice to the guest. Yeah. Not that you were rude, but right. you would just- No, but sometimes I just power down. You power down. And I'm like, okay. And then me and Jack are like, thank you so much for coming. Like, I know she's <laughs> acting very weird. And then like, sometimes we would like then sit around and like catch up about Jack's dating or right. me, me and Zach or whatever. And I remember taking it a little personally that like, she wasn't enthusiastically engaging. Yeah. And I'm like, does she hate me? Does she mm-hmm. want me to leave? Is yeah. she irritated by our presence? Yeah. Like it was, so it took me so long to understand that it's not personal. So I right. wanted to make sure that you knew. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And also for you to know that when she, she does do that. Like I've been in many hotel rooms now with Kelty where like a full day is done. And I'm like, I know Kelty needs to not be spoken to. Yeah. She needs to eat. She needs to read. She needs to shower. And if she speaks to me, yeah. I'll speak back, but I'm not yeah. going to engage. So yeah. I was like, those are my, that's my best advice. Cause otherwise there's really like, you're an easy person to navigate. But yeah. That's so crazy that it was your like, levels of exhaustion. Yeah. I definitely feel so much like more like we can, we Alive. small talk, we like, yeah. you know, like in between stuff. I like, yeah. Um, but who knows? It could change again. So don't get yeah. used well, to this and if nice does, version of me. But if it does, he can also be like, hey, I think you're. Yeah, it's low. Yeah. The vibes are low. Vibes okay. Are low. So then, so you didn't, I didn't, you know, I never told me about Whole Foods. So then you didn't get Whole Foods. You came here for the audition. And then. Well, you, can we discuss prior to super fan? Cause I learned about Derek and yes. the car ride that you you're from Maine. From Maine. He is Noah Khan. He is stick season. He is stick season. <laughs> um, what were you doing in Maine? You were celebrity adjacent at that point. Yes. I was working for Patrick Dempsey's nonprofit, mm-hmm. the Dempsey center. That was my last job before I moved to LA uh, wonderful organization. Um, and, uh, you know, my entire twenties, I was kind of floundering. I went to culinary school after high school and he's a great baker. Sometimes he brings me a banana bread in the morning. Cute. Yes. Mm -hmm. I worked in bakeries and restaurants and grocery stores and, you know, always wanted, always wanted to be in this world Mm -hmm. and, uh, wasn't finding it there clearly. Um, but I, you know, I loved my family and my friends and it was really hard to leave all of that behind. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I finally just did though. I did it. It's just crazy to me because we have like such a similar story and Becca too, where it's like, you're just like, I want something. I'm moved to a city where I know no one. Mm -hmm. You didn't know anyone. Derek's first friend was a produce is a LA friend is a producer on an E red carpet live because mm. he had no friends. He was working yeah. for me. And Maddie was like, uh, Maddie is like also a, you know, a WeHo gay here in Hollywood. And he was like, come to my drag thing on Monday nights and like, whatever. And I was like, listen, you got to go. Like you got to meet the people. And now you have a roommate friend and like, now yeah. you have kind of a circle, which is like so awesome. Yeah. But it's like, he literally knew no one. Yeah. Like that's, who does that? That's so brave. Like yeah. I think about all of our lady and girls and all the people in the world. They're like, I want to make a life change. And you're so afraid to take the leap, yeah. you know, and to do that thing that's going to change your life. And it was so interesting. Cause when I had surgery, Derek went home for a, a week or so to see his family. Cause I was like, I'm, my mom's coming. Like, I'm not going to need you. And you didn't even like it. Right. Yeah. I mean, Sorry to everyone listening, but like, it's weird. You outgrow like the place you're from a little bit. Definitely outgrew it. I mean, I loved seeing my people, Yeah. but being back in that setting, it was very strange and seemed so small to me Yeah. and, and kind of suffocating. Well, I mean, that's sort of like what's supposed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, your life gets bigger and your world gets bigger and well, you're also a good combination of somebody who you have to have big dreams, but then you also have to like have the chutzpah and the work ethic to make things happen. So it's like you took the chance, but then you've been working your ass off since the moment you got here. So it's like a testament to you because a lot of people have these big dreams, but then they get somewhere and they get scared and And they're not willing to do the whole foods. They don't want to do the whole foods. They don't want to pick up Kelty's like dry cleaning. They don't want to, you know, so it's something that you 
you've got what it takes and I feel like you're going to go so far and I'm yeah. sad for Kelty cause you're going to be leaving her. No, but- exactly. I always say that. And I'm like, well, when you leave me and he's like, I'm never leaving. And I was like, you will. Every assistant eventually leaves like, and it's they true. go do something else. I kind of, I'm like rewatching the Rachel Zoe project right now. Yeah, I am too. And I feel yeah. like so I'm Rachel and Derek is Brad, Brad. Mm-hmm. and even the glasses and everything. And I was just like, oh my God, he's going to leave me and have his own career. And I'm just going to be like, You'll be happy for him. No, I'll be happy for you, sort of. What is the craziest thing that you've found yourself doing, Mm -hmm. being a part of since becoming Kelty's assistant? Like, what's the high low? You can can tell us. I mean, I know that picking up Callie's dog poop in the backyard is probably the worst part of the job. You make him do that? Yeah. (laughs) That is definitely one of the lows, for sure. (laughs) It's called, we do, it's called taking a lap. Sure. And here's the thing, on you, board, onboarding an assistant. The way she brands things <laughs> is wonderful. Taking a lap. So we all know I'm a tornado. Yeah. And I was like, yes, I need help with the dry cleaning. I need to get to work. I need to have my calendar done. Like all of that's high end shit. But to be honest with you, I do need someone to follow me around the tornado that's Kelty and yeah. just pick up the disaster that is me. Yeah. Like the, the mugs, mess that I leave behind. The mugs. The mugs. The empty Celsius cans, you know, the, <laughs> the, the coffee, the papers. She leaves dribbles everywhere yeah. too. Like, yeah. Liquids. And so I'm like, when I onboarded <laughs> Derek, I'm like, okay, you need to take a lap, which means you walk around the house and you collect all the mugs and like the bags that I've left. Just tidying up. It's just like a tidy up. It's like. Take a lap. Take a lap. Just do a lap. And it's like, I do Callie's, I scoop the poop every morning. But oh. sometimes there's an afternoon poop. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh. And so it's just like, before people come to the house or not whatever. A lot. It's, it's not a lot. It's not every day. It's like, I do all of these okay. things. All right. I clean up after myself as much as I can. But sometimes when we get super busy, especially during award season, like there's just... There's just bags that have come from work that has a shoe and it needs to be returned. And like, he just needs to follow me and like pick up the hair extensions that are on the floor and like put them in the bag and make sure that, you know, the camera gets back in the work bag. Like we have a whole system, but it's just take a lap. I'll never forget the first time I washed the weaves. (laughs) Iconic. In her bathroom, which is gorgeous and so fun to be in. Just washing her hair extensions in the sink. Can laying you- them out on the towel <laughs> to air dry. Like, cousin, it has been taken apart. Really fun stuff. Can you do a TikTok like the, the diaries of an assistant? I really want him to. I, you uh, should yes. because she's like one of the few yeah. people that will just let you p- yes. air out all I the know. stuff. Yeah. I know. Because most people are so secretive, but like you a thousand percent should start, do- yeah. start doing this. Well, like at work, I like to have my Spanx and underwear all hung yeah. and like sorted. So it's like the briefs are all clipped oh. together. The long Spanx are clipped together. So you can the, see what you've so got. So I can see and I'm like, oh, I need this one because digging through a thing, it just turns into to a thing so it's like sorting the spang and the blacks and the nudes yeah yeah <laughs> all co- coordinated what is your astrological sign again aquarius oh, you're the right. same which is so weird that is so funny yeah. yeah but it is funny because derek is a little spacey and i'm spacey too like we looked for a cord for like 15 minutes this morning and it was right in front of us <laughs> so it's like it's funny and like sometimes i look at him and i was like no no there can only be one space yeah. cadet in this yeah, duo i like you gotta focus yeah. because i'm the You're one the that's allowed cadet. to lose my mind you know what i mean yeah. but it's funny derek picks me up every day drives me to work and people at work are calling him prince you guys coined prince derek you i don't did. know what did we yeah i don't even remember how I or why that you started did. i thought kelty did maybe but I, now everyone at work is it's like, where's Prince Derek? Like, everyone's calling him Prince Derek. It's That's so your cr- TikTok candle. It's yeah. got to be your new I TikTok. I should change it today. Yes. Yeah. We are branding this. Yeah. We're branding this. I'll make a t-shirt. What I love yeah. about Derek, though, is he is honest. Like, he yeah, has he this, and I mean this with love. Like, he has this, the gay bestie of him. He cannot lie. Yeah. So, like, when he doesn't like my outfit at work, like, he can't. Wait. He, yesterday he looked two at, days ago yeah he looked at me and he was like I have no words or like when my hair I'm like does it does it look like a wig and he's like yes <laughs> <laughs> and he's like this is not a good color but on you. this is great because you're someone who takes nothing personally no not no at feedback. all and I'm like I need to be my best self yeah and so I'm like and I want the best for you and I have really high standards 
It's true. So it's true. I don't want to bullshit you. Yeah. You, you do have So he great tells taste. me the truth, which is really like sometimes we have to pick <laughs> out a shoe and he's like, no, 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 no. Like he's like, you know, he, it's great. It's kind of great because you want <sighs> someone like, listen, you know, you're on the payroll. So yeah. like you have to be nice to me and do shit like no matter what, but you also want someone that's like not afraid of you completely. Like I only want you to be 90% afraid. Cause the first day, remember I was like, don't be too nice to him. Cause I'm testing him out. Yeah. I got to see how you are under pressure. And then I said that to everyone at E for like the first month, they'd be like, you know, cause Derek would like, now he'll like come in, bring me tea, kiki with everyone. Like we'll work sometimes when I'm in glam. But at first I was like, no, no, don't let him in here. Don't be nice to him. Don't talk to him when he comes oh, in. Oh, I used to be so afraid of going into that room. Yeah. Because for I really real? wanted to like, I needed to like, <laughs> I needed him to understand what it's like to work in a psychopath place. Like, I know that is so mean, but like, there's so many places in entertainment where the assistants, you do not want to be heard from. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you, you, like not every set is as warm and cozy as the E set. Mm -hmm. Like, and so there are, we go on different things, right? We do the E live, we do this, we do this. And so it's like, not every set is going to want the assistant to come in and be Prince Derek and fabulous and like rule the room, you know? So I really needed to teach him like when I was onboarding him, like who, where we're silly and where we're not silly. And so now he's like friends with everyone and it's great. But I also wanted him to be a little scared of me because I know that sounds so douchey, but it's like, I've had assistants before where I was too nice to them right at the start. And then they were just lazy. Well, it's not nice it's and weird. not nice. It's, it's not, not nice. It's, and, yeah. it's that your boundaries were not firm in the beginning. Right. So it's like, it's you, when you're working like that, it's a really tricky relationship to navigate because it is so personal. You get personal so assistant. Close. Yeah. You get so close. Real close. But then yeah. it's yeah, very close. And sometimes too close. <laughs> but then there still has to be a healthy foundation. Yes. Where there is the the dyna the power dynamic yeah. that is recognized. Yeah. And I it is very, very hard to do without being like a callous bitch. Yeah. But also being able to to say this is how it's going to work and you're going to have to just be. But it's also just having being a good personal assistant is it's so hard. It is a very hard job. Difficult. It's a tightrope walk. And usually the best ones are the ones that are aware of all their surroundings at all times. There's self-awareness and there's just knowing your audience. Yeah. So you just naturally are someone who, who does that. Yeah. So you have an easy time with it, but you don't always know that with people. You yeah. don't, you can't always tell. And you can't tell in a, like a zoom interview with someone, yes. you know, like how they're going to fit in. It was funny because even my executive producers at E, the Johns, they were like, Derek never talks to us. Does he hate us? And I was like, no, no, I've trained him. Yeah. Like I'm trained him. Like the assistants don't go to the executive producers and be like, how are you today? <laughs> like they're busy. They're running a multi-million well, dollar extension show. of you. Right. And so it's like, he kind of now he, he's learned his thing, but I think it's important because I, I'm all for like, I want to have fun. It's the same exact same thing with lady gang. It's the same thing with everything in your life. I want to have fun. I want to like have a good time. I want my life to be enjoyable, but when it's time to work, it's time to work mm -hmm. when it's time for, you know, to show up at 8 a.m. because we have someone coming to meet at the house at 8 a.m. Like, you gotta be on time. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not your friend where I'm like, oh, you had a hard night last night? Cool, come in whenever. No, no, no. This is a J-O-B. You yeah. know what I mean? This is your job. And so if if you don't have a handle on it and can't be professional, then it then I can't do my job, you know? Yeah. And so there has to be that mix of like, we'll kiki and we'll have a good time. But then also it's like, when it's time to work, it's time to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I think, I think we have a good balance of that. I think right? we do a great don't job you? of that. Yeah. What is your favorite thing that, like that you guys do? But what do you look forward to when something is on the schedule? Like what's the best part of this job? Probably when she gets to see Becca. No. I actually love Lady Gang stuff. You do? It's actually my favorite segment. Yay. It's the most diverse and yeah. cr and creative. Yeah. Yeah. Um and you know the first week was the Grammy Awards which <laughs> Holy shit. by the way is insane. Yeah. But was also really exciting. My the first like month was award season. Yes. Uh Grammy, SAGs and then Oscars. So that was wild. That's when yeah. she's that at was her wild. worst too. Yeah. That was really getting thrown into yes. the wolves. Yeah. Yes. Because it would just be like, where are the nipple pasties? <laughs> Derek yeah. would be like, I don't know what that even...
looks like, yeah. like packing my suitcase, He's like, Hello, unpacking have the we suitcase. Met? <laughs> I know he would like sit in the hotel cause I get ready in the hotel rooms and he would just be like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, right. And I was just, just like, panic. you just do whatever you do whatever yeah. I need in that moment. Do yeah. I need a celery? Yeah. Do I need a Coke? Like, what do I need? Yeah. It was so wild. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite awards show? I think the SAG awards because we were right there oh, on the carpet. and you got to come on the carpet. Sometimes they don't allow the assistants on the carpet. Mm -hmm. So he would be like in the hotel room watching me after he like, we show ponied and then he like. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had any crazy celebrity interactions? Like, or, or like, what's the, yeah. what's the thing that you tell people when they're like, how's your work? Yeah. And you called your best friend in Maine and you were like, you are never going to believe who I saw and what they did. Kathy Griffin was a big deal for me. Yeah. Really, On Lady Gang. really yeah. big She was deal. so lovely. I've loved her since I was a teenager. I used to watch D-List every season and all of her comedy specials. Um, and that was early on in the job. Yeah. So that was a huge deal. Um, Steven Sanchez was really fun the other week. We played one of his songs and just danced in front of him in the hallway at the- Slow the, dance. In the dressing when room. When you were mine, I will never fall, fall in, in love. love. And we Cute. did it like a, you know? That was really funny. Yeah, that was really funny. The biggest heartbreak, honestly, is that when Derek started, I found my old like point and shoot camera that we had on Lady Gang TV and I was so excited about it. And we were taking pictures and they're the best pictures of all time. And then I dropped it oh, and I broke no. the lens and I got a new lens and the camera's never been the same. Oh, it's the yeah. hardest part about our job. Yeah. It's like, how do we Wait, get a good picture a of Kelty? Wait, is it a different Kelty? lens from our photo shoot in Florida? Yeah. That's upsetting. And we, I think it had a film on it from your life. Yeah. I think that's what it was. The amount of like. That's honestly the hardest part of my job is <laughs> degreasing her phone. <laughs> like keeping the camera lenses clean. <laughs> all three of them. <laughs> like the amount of TikToks, the Megan Trainer TikTok that I took was like cloudy <laughs> because I accidentally forgot to like degrease all of the. <laughs> on your hands all the time i don't know is it's, no one else it's body is that makeup it's body makeup is no one else that you're always like head to toe in makeup it's lotions it's potions it's body <laughs> makeup it's yeah it's, have you seen her nude a million times no we had our first nude a few times not a lot yeah, I try to be, that's the one thing I try to be respectful of because I have only had female assistants. Right. This is my first male assistant. And normally I would walk around naked all the time. And then Chris is like, you know, you can't do that. Someone will come back that's and blah, blah, true. But I was like, I feel like I explained very clearly when I, when I hire people, like part of my job is getting dressed 47 times a day. Yeah. So like, yeah, you're going to be, and like, if you're uncool with that, turn around, like face the wall, this is not the job for you. And also like, you know, I make people sign an NDA, like, you know, all that stuff. But I'm like, someone may come back and try to sue me and be like, I, I don't know. Like I, she put her vagina in my face. I don't, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Haven't we heard like crazy stories about people having no, to like- No, I know, but I'm saying like, the, it, right. even if you're just like bending over, getting right. spanks on, no. someone could interpret that and exactly. really have Exactly, and so I'm like, day. you're not the, I just, it's Don't a get risk. any ideas, It's a Prince risk Derek I take. Never. It's a risk I take. <laughs> Like, you know, I mean, I honestly, it's not that spectacular when I'm naked. So I don't think it's anything to like write home with, but like, sometimes I forget that Derek's Prince Derek and then I'll open the door and be like, can you hang this up? And I know that I like, um, yeah, it's fine. She does apologize a lot. I'm like, it's okay. Yeah. I, it's like fine. I don't yeah. care. It's the one, like I'm, I feel like that's the one area where actually I'm not a robot. You're aware. Like I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm aware that yeah, I don't want people aware. to feel uncomfortable because I'm so comfortable being naked because yeah. I was a showgirl. Yeah. I'm like. Literally, we do fittings, and I'm just like, I don't want to go to the room, no. put the thing on, come back out. Like, no. that is so bleh to me. It's like, no. Anyway. Showgirl. Um, Prince Derek, what is your, um, what is your great, do you have a great Kelty story? Like, what, when people are like, what's it like working for Kelty? Do you have, like, one, I mean, no pressure, but, like, you know. Or is there something you feel like in Lady, in, on the podcast, we haven't discussed or uncovered or like yeah. told the audience something yeah. they wouldn't know about Kelty. I mean, we're such an open book. Yeah. Well, I think one thing that people aren't aware of as much is how nice Kelty is to people. Yeah. Yeah. She, you are like, you're really, really generous to people, um, mm -hmm. quietly. And she's a helper. She helps people out a lot. Like mm -hmm. you're really, 
strong proponent of women Mm -hmm. and other people in the business. And you You, always try to help people, you know, where you can and bring other people up. And people don't talk about that enough. You're right. We certainly don't talk about it enough because we like to keep the the facade that she's a psychopath. (laughs) It doesn't help us very much because we can't have three kind people. No, exactly. You're right. And I'm glad you said that because it is very true. Yeah. I mean, she, she's, you are, you do a lot to help other people. You're not somebody who, um, even when you're climbing the mountain, you're not like pushing other people out of the way. It's wild. I do. I'm like, get out of my way. I'll kill you. I mean, I'm less, I'm more that now, but I, I try to like, you know, it's my rule. Like I'm, I said to Derek once, this busy season is over, which I know I've said every month for like the last five months, but I'm like, once this busy season, we, I'm saying no to everything. Cause he gets all my invites to mm-hmm. things, but then I just feel like, Oh my God, I need to show up for you. And then I am so overwhelmed. So like, please, we're not saying yes to anything except the thing on Tuesday. We're saying yes to that. And then after that, What's never on Tuesday? again, I'm going to like a dinner for my friend's brand. Oh. Anyway, it's going to be great. Okay. Um, Derek, so happy you're here. How was your first podcast? It was incredible. Thank you both so much. I love you both. We love you, Prince Derek. This was so fun. Thank you to the Lady Gangers Aww. for your support. They and really your love. They love you. They were really going for you on Facebook. I appreciate you so much. I can't wait to see you on tour this year. Yes, yes. you'll be there. Yes. Okay, we weren't here for a long time, but we we're here for a Prince, Prince Derek, Derek time. time. Ooh, ooh.